Here we show that procyanidin C1, a polyphenolic component of grapeseed extract, increases the health span and lifespan of mice through its action on senescent cells. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show. Well yes, we are back with another senescence video as some interesting research was published last week regarding the identification of a new senolytic. So let's take a look at the data. Now, if you've been a viewer with me for a while, then you're a pro at senescence. But just as a brief refresher, cellular senescence is a cell state that a cell may enter when it undergoes stress. That could be replicative stress from dividing too many times or too quickly, DNA damage, oxidative stress, and oncogenic stress. A senescent cell cannot divide and develops a secretory phenotype known as the senescence-associated secretory phenotype, the SASP, which amongst many factors includes pro-inflammatory factors that are thought to drive ageing phenotypes and age-related pathologies. In particular, the presence of senescent cells have been shown to accumulate with age and have been linked with different age-associated diseases such as osteoarthritis, neurodegeneration and lung fibrosis. Removing these senescent cells, therefore, may help alleviate some of the symptoms of these diseases. And based on work published in mice, it seems to be the case so far. Examples include the combination of dasatinib and quercetin that delayed age-associated disorders in mice and is now in human clinical trials, and more recently, fisetin that extended health and lifespan in mice and similarly is undergoing human clinical trials. So there you are, we already have senolytics that seem promising. Why are we still looking? Well, to be frank, it's not known exactly how these drugs specifically kill senescent cells and what impact they still have on healthy cells. Moreover, senescent cells are very heterogeneous, and some senolytics may only remove a subset of them and not all of them, or they might remove all of them and maybe we only want to remove a certain subset of them. Other senolytics, if identified, could be more effective, work at a lower dose, have fewer side effects, these sorts of things. So yeah, there's still interest in trying to identify senolytics. So this nicely leads on to this recent publication, the flavonoid procyanidin C1 has senotherapeutic activity and increases lifespan in mice. So the first thing they did in this paper was do an in vitro screen, so in petri dishes, to test the effect of a medicinal library of natural products on control, so healthy cells, and senescent cells. They tested their model first by using known senolytics, and as you can see, and apologise the resolution is not amazing, but in grey you have control growing cells, representing healthy cells and red bars show the number of senescent cells. So what this graph is showing is that when you add ABT263 or AB2737, or the combination of dasatinib and quercetin, so known senolytics, the number of senescent cells decrease because they've died. So they then used the same model and tested the other compounds in their library. And as you can see here, they identified five that seem to be working as senolytics. You have fisetin, which is kind of already known to work, quercetin, curcumin, pipalongamine, and grapeseed extract. Since it remains largely unexplored, the authors decided to focus on grapeseed extract. At higher concentrations, it showed greater senolytic potential, but it plateaued at 3.75 micrograms per milliliter. Importantly though, even at concentrations of 15 micrograms per milliliter, it didn't seem to affect the fireability of healthy growing cells. So this fulfills the criteria of a senolytic agent. The thing is, grapeseed extract is evidently a mixed bag of molecules. So what exactly is it that's mediating these benefits? Well, they did some mass spectrometry to see what compounds are found in grapeseed extract, and it includes a combination of phenolic acids and flavonoids as well as procyanidins. And to cut a long story short, it turned out to be the molecule procyanidin C1, PCC1, that was possessing the senolytic potential. It was only at higher concentrations that it caused these senescent cells to die. But this is all nice, so far, but it's just been done in cell culture dishes. What about some in vivo data? Well, they tested PCC1 in mice. They did a few different things, but I'll only show you a couple of examples here. One experiment they did was treat aged mice, here 20 months of age, with PCC1 once every two weeks for four months, so similarly to other studies, they're adopting this hit and run strategy for senolytics. The idea that once you clear the senescent cells, it takes a bit of time for them to reaccumulate. And so if you can use them only intermittently, it might help to reduce side effects. 
and a bit of a tangent, but there's been some hate for these mouse diagrams. I mean, personally, I think they look a little bit more like rabbits, but I do like the whiskers. Anyway, PCC1 refers senescence associated beta gal activity, so this is just a marker that we commonly use to identify senescent cells, um, refers to staining in kidney, liver, lung, and prostate, as well as showing functional improvements in maximal walking speed, grip strength, and treadmill endurance. They then did a separate study where they gave PCC1 once every two weeks, starting at an even older age, this time 24 to 27 months old mice. So this equates to around 75 to 90 year old humans. And here it showed a 9.4% longer overall lifespan and a 64.2% longer median lifespan, suggesting that PCC1 decreases the risk of age-associated mortality. So to quote from the article, we hereby present proof of principle evidence that even when administered in late life, such a therapeutic modality holds prominent potential to remarkably delay age-related dysfunction, reduce age-related diseases and enhance health conditions, thus providing a new avenue to improve health span and lifespan in future geriatric medicine. So what are my thoughts? Well, I mean, so far it looks pretty promising, especially with the impact by giving it to the mice at late life. But for me, there are two main questions that remain. Firstly, how translatable will it be to humans? So obviously we won't know this data until randomised controlled clinical trials have been performed. And secondly, the biochemist in me wants to know why and how this is happening. What is PCZ1 targeting and how can we use that knowledge to further understand senolytics, how they're functioning, or maybe to identify better alternatives? They did show in the study that PCZ1 seems to be somehow inducing mitochondrial dysfunction by paradoxically increasing the levels of reactive oxygen species, which they did show in the study that when it combines PCC1 with a respiratory analogue that suppresses the reactive oxygen species, the senolytic activity was also reduced. And so this actually raises an an interesting question that they don't really talk about, about what would happen if you combined this PCC1 with other potential anti-aging compounds. So again, this is why it's so important to understand how these agents are supposedly acting within a cell. And so probably for your interest, where can we actually find PCC1? Well, as evident from this paper, you can seem to find it in grapeseed extract, but there's lower abundance as well in extracts of cinnamon, apple peels, and pine bark. So all in all, to quote again from this article, PCC1 represent a new class of phytochemical senolytics isolated from natural sources that delay aging and ameliorate age-related disorders and warrants further exploration as a potential geroprotective agent in clinical medicine. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed this grape video. (laughs) Uh, Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.